Hello everybody and welcome to the Osmania 4K World Cup 2016. I am David and I will be commentating with Juan Crystal, Connor, and one of the Osmania champions, Halogen. How are you guys? Champion. <laughs> Halogen. Hey, Man, how are you? This has been so long. This seems like a DJ vu somehow. <laughs> Definitely agree with that. One year has passed, and now we are here once again. And now we're joined with Connor. How are you doing, Connor, by the way? I'm doing good. Gets me here for the first time. That should That's be fun. Right. First time come. Yeah, this is your first time in the World Cup as well, too, isn't it, Connor? Uh, yeah, I only started playing OSU in general last year, so I wasn't quite good enough at the time last year. What a heck of a turnaround. You go from being just the general novice to not only playing in the World Cup for the first time, but actually commentating in it as well. That's pretty commendable. Yeah, I can't wait to be carried. It's going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> That's the spirit. It's going to be fun to see which teams didn't bother to practice the SV picks as well. <laughs> I look forward to seeing this. I know it's going to happen somewhere. It's just a matter of which teams. And it's very cool because the format changes compared to last year are a little bit more conducive for exposing teams who uh, didn't quite practice as much as others. I'm just kind of seeming excited that we get to see New Zealand first. <laughs> this should be very interesting for me. There's a lot. Of, I'm actually kind of waiting for the year that New Zealand just gets out of the group stage. One year is gonna happen. One year. I just have no idea when. <laughs> Don't worry, the more you believe, the more chance they have. The, the, they've got no chances. <laughs> oh my god. No faith. I, I gotta ask you, though, as the, uh, as the current Osmania champion, how are you feeling coming into this year's World Cup? This... <laughs> this year's gonna be a bloodbath. The top seeds this year are absolutely insane. I mean... South Korea is bringing an absolute monster of a team. Brazil has Brazil has improved beyond belief. We've, we're seeing Chile in the top seeds for the first time, and a lot of people in the Mania community know why between a couple of their players. It's going to be nuts. And there's I even gotta, some really strong high seeds, too. I got a hard to pick with Brazil, actually. They don't have the star player. I'm kind of sad. <laughs> yeah, we, we're missing the Spurring guy. About New Zealand, I think they have a chance in this year, honestly. Like, this is the key match for them, for sure. Yeah, you were actually telling me about that the other day, that you think they might actually make the past round 16, yeah. round 16 group stage. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it depends on this match, honestly, like, about how good Malaysia can perform and how good New Zealand can perform as well. Like, this match is really important for these two teams, because whoever wins this one will likely get a spot on the bracket stage. Like, it depends on the match against the unseeded team of the group, but having Which the first Russia. win... Yeah, but Rush is also a really, really strong team for the unseeded. So, pretty tough. I mean, pretty hard group, yeah. All I can say is, I'm going to be incredibly salty if New Zealand loses to Malaysia, Russia, and then beats Canada. That would be great. One thing you got to take into account here, too, is that in Score V2, these score weightings are absolutely amplified to catch mistakes. Like, if you make even a minor mistake or a combo break, it hurts a lot more. So that could be, you know, a ticket for New Zealand to actually do better if their consistency is on point. Yeah, I was going to say, with the new score system, though, like, we could see some massive upsets there. Yeah, and it's not only on the breaks and the accuracy is also like 
like the Scorby 2 rewards so much the consistency compared to the accuracy or the like the combo holding. Like the most difficult thing here is that 100% a double S. It's so much big of a difference compared to any other score. Like it's something normal that we might see 999,000 points double S's from pretty much every team that can hold that level. Like, it's really, like, it rewards a lot the consistency more than anything. Of course, if you have good ratio, your score will do uh, really better, but it's mostly about holding the percentage this time. So we will see how the Mania players prepare themselves for this new scoring system. Also, the free mod bracket will be really interesting in general. We might see some surprises with the flashlight hardware potential, especially yeah, in get, the early rounds. Yeah, I get the feeling we might see quite a bit of a uh, flashlight. Like, if there is a place we will see that happening, is for sure the group stages. Like, I can see a lot of teams dropping the flashlight and in the round 16, or even the hard rock eventually. Depends on the team, but. In a group stage, we'll be likely to have uh, one player at least going flash like hard rock in most of the matches. The the free mod component is gonna definitely shake things up a bit here because it adds an element of risk for an element of reward in terms of scoring. And again, we mentioned score v two having some pretty different score weighting and. A player who picks those mods and isn't adequately prepared could end up hurting their team as opposed to helping them. Indeed, it's also a really big risk to go with double mods. But right here, this is actually really interesting because Worms has pretty much the best ratio from all the people here and he's using Hard Rock, <laughs> which is a bit of a surprise. Yeah, it looks like uh, Cryolian also went with... Is that I can't tell what mod that is there. I'm here. Yeah, not on the yeah. default. That is hidden. I don't have the default skin on here. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. Neither do I. But yeah, that's a victory on the first warm up for Malaysia. Um, none of these players managed to get the full combo, although Worms had only one combo break, one miss. Yep. That was not enough even with the hard rock for the New Zealand team, but this is just a warm up. And I, I think the level of the people is a little bit harder than the pull that we will see. So. I will say this I do like that you can get more than a million points. Oh now, no. Oh. Not this again. <laughs> it showed up. I can't, that did not take long at all. <laughs> It just the the second started, and the commentators already broken. First match already. We the have second this one song, again. the second song we hear in this tournament, is going to be True Millennium Queen. Always Malaysia. It is always Malaysia. This is just the de facto warm up now. Yeah, this is the usual warm up. Your casual warm up as a Malaysian. Meanwhile, we can insert uh, Kamikaze here, uh, yelling at the various teams for not using his long note map as a warm-up because memes. I can see uh, everyone failing on the long note chart. <laughs> Score me too. Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> I think one of the main deciders that's going to happen, especially on the SV maps, well, and the LN maps as well, is whether or not teams have actually practiced in score v2 lobbies, because those long note endings are really going to hurt people on the SVs. That's actually a really good point. Like, you might have trained the whole pool by yourself, but if you didn't do that on a multiplayer game with the score v2, you can easily tell the difference, because it's pretty much playing a different thing. The, like the, the latency that you have on uh, the releases levels are really harsh. The HP drain works a little bit different. There's so many things that change it. So we have to see it. The, I'm pretty sure that most of the teams already practice it on V2, but there is always a chance that a random player or a random team didn't, and we will probably be able to notice that because 
it's pretty hard to transition between the two scoring systems. I remember this one being actually a hard challenge as well, right? Like it's like yeah, it's game. definitely got it's definitely got some difficulty to it. Uh, certainly, the difficulty of this chart is well beyond what we're going to see in group stages, assuming that it's the uh, the same one that we're used to seeing in the previous uh, previous stages or previous World Cup, excuse me. Yeah, pretty sure it's the same one. I wonder if someone will go with Monrog or maybe another official mod. Well, we're about to find out right now. Let's see. Worms yet again going with Hard Rock, Cryolian also with Hidden. I believe Uchichex Hong on Malaysia is also doing Hard Rock. Yep, same picks in terms of mods for both teams. Oh, Uchicha did uh, Hard Rock on the last one. I didn't catch that. Right there. That background is so the funny. The background is so good. <laughs> Happy birthday. Also, a good thing to notice here, I'm not too sure which is the OD of this map, but that's also a new thing for the Manius Corby 2. The, the room you have in terms of milliseconds to get a, a max 300 or a normal 300 changes with the OD, so that will be a thing as well. We have some OD7 maps in the pool, which are easier to get accuracy on than the usual maps on Scorby. But we also have the some maps which are like all the 8.5. I don't know if we have a 9, but those are of course harder to get accuracy on. And with Hard Rock as well, it will be a big challenge to get good accuracy in most of the maps of the free mode bracket. Yeah, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, because I know that this was something that was still being talked about close to tournament time here, but. Hard Rock is now just a direct scale of what the uh, timing window is at the respective OD, so it's 40, was it 40% smaller? Yeah, something like that, I think. Like, the main thing about the Hard Rock now is the recent change made to the Hard Rock is that it changed the scale between OD C1 and 5 and between 5 and 10, so if the OD is really high, you get a little bit less of a punish but you still get a tighter window to hit. So OD10 with Hard Rock is around 11 milliseconds of room to get a max. I thought it was around 10, but either way, it's still going to be considerably tighter. Yeah, it is tighter. Like, probably most of the really accurate players can handle that consistently, but it's of course a pretty big difference. Like, I think the normal uh, seconds that you have is 14 for OD8. So there is a noticeable difference. Maybe it is 10 actually. Like, I will have to check that out. Yeah. See, now that I've actually gone out instead of playing maybe a lot more seriously, watching this hurts my fingers even more than last year did. Because <laughs> <laughs> now I know the actual struggle of trying to do this. Malaysia with a very decisive victory on the warm up there, and now we actually see Uchicha and warms. Uh, both breaking the 1 million point barrier there is substantially better on uh, Uchicha's side there because of a reduced 200 count, of course. Yeah, but more misses, as you can see. So, more misses, yeah. Barely suppressing the million bar over there. Less than 1,000 points. But yep, that's going to conclude the warm-ups for our very first match here. So now the true strategy, the true match begins here. We're going to get only one ban per team here, and that is crucial. Oh, that's also a thing that we didn't mention. We yes. have only one ban this year. That's a big thing. Well, it's time to see if Robo Position manages to get 100% ban rate. <laughs> You guys are the best maps. We start with this already. We have Cryolin. Expected. Expected. 
All right, so Malaysia is going to get the first ban here, and they only get one ban, as we mentioned before. Now, it's one of the rule changes compared to last year. Instead of two bans, you only get one, so you can't quite hide your weaknesses as well as you were able to yesterday. And Connor calls it Robo Position is gone. What do you think the New Zealand ban is going to be? Uh, probably inside. No one yeah. wants to play the long no pick. Yeah, that that chart is really, really rough. Called it. Damn, man, nice. called it. So we lose the SV map, Robo Position, which still leaves Electronic Sound Lab open, of course, and we lose the long no pick. Yeah, Electronic Sound Lab is like... I can't consider that as SV, but in a way, it's different. It's, it's like, much more intuitive than Robo Position yeah, is, that's definitely. for sure. Like, I will call the other map more SV than the electron Son Sonic Labs. I don't remember the name. Electronic Sound Lab. Oh, okay. <laughs> I will call Dote Korose actually being a uh, an SB pick more than Electronic Sounds Lab. Yeah, I mean it's got less SVs, but they're a bit more um, they're a bit more intrusive on your play. Like if you don't know that they're there, they're gonna hurt you pretty bad. And right out of the gates, we see Electronic Sound Lab from New Zealand. What a nice way to start a tournament! I love this song. Also, that's something else that we're going to end up seeing uh, in between rooms here. And I mean, we're going to only be the ones to see that. I don't know if the chat gets to see the... Or I'm sorry, I don't know if the stream gets to see the chat here. But we're going to have to make sure that players disable their mods in and out of pre-mod picks. Especially those who are using flashlight. It's been a constant worry uh, during practice here that we're going to end up leaving our mods on and then not switching them off and have a speed mod Oops. that's only half of what we need. <laughs> but yes, so as we are about to start the first match, any final predictions for this match? It's hard to tell. So far it's looking like Malaysia has an advantage, but when it comes to this level of difficulty, I think both teams are a little bit more equal. I will call Malaysia. I'll call Malaysia as well here. Malaysia's they're not only uh, a little bit more equipped to take this map pool on, but they're also a veteran team. They've been through the World Cup before, a good majority of their team anyway. Um, I'm going to call it 4-1 for them. I'll say that New Zealand actually manages to steal a pick. I think it will be 4-2. There we go with the SVs already. Phantom and Alaman are, are having a little bit of issues when it comes to accuracy, but they are recovering a bit fine now. Worms and Creo are still with 100%. Having the right start is really important. Worms breaking that double S there, and that hit concentration was actually off for a little uh, little while there. Just a lot of regular 300s, almost no rainbows going on there. And Cryolian showing his veteran skills right there, still holding that double S through the earlier SVs in this map. It's a little bit trickier here now. Yeah, I can see how these SVs are tricky up. The lack of a constant rhythm here in this section and the bump SVs happening in between that lack of a constant rhythm, it means you have a little bit less in the way of reaction time. So if you're not on your toes, it's actually easy to mess up here. Did you kind of wait? Because when I was playing, I realized that like when I wasn't on my toes and just kind of slacking around, I played better. That tends to work on certain kinds of maps, but on SV maps, you need to have that focus. Or either that, or you just need to be able to have the map so well in tune with how you're playing that it just happens very naturally. And that's that tends to be the end goal of SVs. Or maybe I just haven't played enough SV maps. We're coming into the end of the map here, and the score difference is actually very, very close. And Kenamisan is doing some uh, accuracy breaks over there. That might be enough to sweep it back. No combo breaks. We still have one more SV. 
more accuracy draws, but it's not looking like it's going to be enough. And Mandacia will end up taking Ooh, it. 10,000 points. 9,500 points. And look at the ratios between the players. They're so close. Three oh, Prio had the hundred percent. I didn't notice that. Yeah, Cryolian with a very, very good ratio there. It looks like better than eight to one. But look at the other ratios there: three twenty and eight, three oh six and twenty, three fifty four and fourteen with two, one two, three fourteen and eighteen. These guys are pretty, pretty evenly matched. What a way to start, there. Yeah, consider this is an SV pig, though. So. I can see Malaysia doing better job with comes to accuracy in maps that do not have those SV changes. Yeah, definitely, definitely going to be. Um, I mean, we have to take into account too that um, that Electronic Sound Lab was actually New Zealand's pick, so advantageous pick, but they still lost. They gave a break point there. Actually, true. It's interesting to see Cryolian do so well uh, when playing Nomad after playing Hidden for both warm-ups. Yeah, Hidden was just a warm-up for the eyes, I guess. And now we await what Malaysia's pick is going to be to uh, open their choices out. I can see Refresh being picked now. Yeah, that's a good accuracy pick. If Malaysia is looking for an easy way to win, and their accuracy is better than New Zealand, it seems like just slightly by most players. But of course, they've got Cryolian, who is substantially better Maybe in terms they, of accuracy. They go for free mod, actually. Oh, they're oh, going no. for do. Uh, I don't remember the second word here. Do take Yeah. Wow, that's a surprise for me. Like that's SV as well. Yeah, a little bit of SVs and also a long note component here too. So again. Uh, with score v2 adding a little bit of an element of risk there on their pick. And Alamana are asking for a switch out, potentially exposing a little bit of a weakness either in long notes or these kinds of SVs. Well, but having a roster to support you in this situation is actually pretty good. Seems like going to be a player swap here for New Zealand. Yeah, this this very much emphasizes the importance of having a full roster that's, you know, multi-specialized. <laughs> nice name. Oh my god. <laughs> Spicy, Spicy meme. meme. Oh, is Grilling actually being replaced as well? Ooh, look at that. I can see a lot of teams uh, switching out players from maps like this because the one LN section in this map can really destroy a score. There, yeah, that it's like uh, a wall of shields two thirds of the way into the map. So cruel. And yeah, Korea is going to be replaced by Say Ren. I do believe Say Ren's actually noticeably better at long notes, so this is a very good switch. I should kind of say one thing though with the um, XU fix. I feel like they're probably a little bit more risky now at the same time just because how much more and this will hurt. Yeah, it's, it's very arguable but legitimate because if both teams are capable of doing the map and um, either side drops, the waiting in the new score system is going to punish you very badly. Seems like they're trying to get one other player swapped on Malaysia's side there. It's actually Sayren going to be swapped again, so... Oh, oh, okay. Not sure who they want in there, I guess. They want Explosive. Like, uh, Explosive 12. I'm not yeah, sure they're trying to get him in mind. there. The team is saying that he's not on the server. <laughs> well, while we have this time on the middle to talk about this potential map, this could be 
a breakpoint for New Zealand if they actually train at the SV, especially the first one, I will say. That's that probably the harder SV one. He made me laugh so the much first when is I saw amazing. it. amazing. It's so well made. And once you get the timing properly, it's really comfortable to play as well. Yeah, definitely. And that actually is, you could say that for the entire map here, there's SV sprinkled throughout that if you don't practice, they're sight readable, but you're going to probably mess your score up after seeing the SVs, it's going to throw you off. But once you know them, they're pretty much trivial. There's there's no point in remembering that they're there. <laughs> I think the only SV that I had trouble with was a quad that's after, I think, a quad long notes. Yeah, near the end of the map, right? Yeah. Yeah, I remember that too. It gave me a little bit of problem during training. I was like, what the heck is this? <laughs> I think uh, if anyone holds too long on those long notes, they might get a break from it. So, as well as the uh, the actual long note section in the map, that could be pretty hurtful on your scores. Yeah, this is actually a good time to emphasize the point that we were mentioning earlier. Those who did not practice on score v2, we might be able to see them because in score v1, you can be slightly complacent with holding your notes a little bit longer than you need to if you're not the most capable at long notes. You cannot do that here. Not without breaking, anyway. So, we're about to start. Let's see. I just want to see the first SV and see if someone gets caught. Everyone's holding decent. And there we go. There we go. Oh, Proof of practice. Uchiha. I will say that every single member on the Malaysian side got issues with that. Oh, Saren with an early drop here. And the lead has quickly gone to New Zealand here in this second song of the match. Are we going to see a double breakpoint? It's, early, it's really early in the map to say that, but very yeah, comfortable but Worms, at the moment. Worms and Spicy Beam are doing a fantastic job here as ball with 100%. All three players are because even their lowest score is only 99.78. But again, we've got these, a little, uh, we've got these um, slightly less coordinated releases here, so we could see some score drops. Although Worms yep. and Spicy Meme, yeah, they're doing fantastic here. Phantom is having issues though with the releases, as you mentioned. He might lack a little bit of practice when it comes to a speed 2 long notes. For the Malaysian side, despite Sayrin, the other players are still holding the combo. And as I said, Sayrin finding a miss over there. That will give a good advantage oh, to New two Zealand. Misses. Oh. Two misses on New Zealand side, and that score is now flashing back and forth here. The score gap is pretty much nothing. Yeah, that section is so brutal. Those That combination of long notes is so hard to hit on B2, and as you can see, the score is flashing back and forth, probably in favor of Malaysia now. And the, oh, the last was me. Oof. And New Zealand takes it back now. And no, once again, it's flashing. This is going to be intense. We cannot Phantom tell having who trouble win. holding oh on my there. God, combo break from Spicy meme. meme. New Zealand is falling apart here. Malaysia seems to have regained their composure. No drops here anymore in this section. As long as Sayren holds it still. Spicy Meme with another drop at the end there, and that's going to all but end it there. And that's a shame. New Zealand actually was holding their own against Malaysia for a little while, but... And look at the ratio. Oh my goodness, Worms. Pretty nice ratio over there. Worms and Spice... All three players with really... Well, actually, Phantom's a little bit on the weaker side with ratio, but Spicy Meme and Worms on the New Zealand side, had they actually held it together, they could have probably had that point. Like I said, pretty close match in general, but Malaysia is still inching the, the score difference in their favor. Sadly, one score was not enough. And that just shows how much more important combo is on score v2. We just free 200s, but those seven combo breaks. 
just ruining Spicy Moon score. I was not expecting it to be the New Zealand team to pick Refresh. Well, to be honest, I will say it's a bad pick. Like, New Zealand is looking to have better accuracy than Malaysia in general. They are just having issues with long notes and sometimes with SVs as well. So this map has like really low amount of long notes and it has just a slow jam. So yeah, this is not a bad pick for New Zealand, I think. I will probably see Creeling going back here into the room. Not sure who will he replace, maybe Siren. They might just be hoping that um, with it being, I think it's the shortest, or at least one of the shortest maps in the pool, that um, they're going to be able to hold combo and uh, just hope for a miss from the Malaysian team. Well, it seems like New Zealand is taking their time to switch their roster. Who's uh, who's getting switched out here for this song? Still not sure. Actually, I'm not too sure if they will end up swapping or not. Maybe they will swap Spicy Meme. Just as a quick update though on the other match, it does look like um, in the Australia vs Macau match, Australia has taken the first point. Rather large margin of victory on that first point as well. Uh, Australia taking it by very close to 200,000 points. Two of their players with really solid ratio, full combos on refresh. The song we're actually about to see now in this match was their first song in um, that match over there. Solid ratio by one player from Macau, but they can't seem to keep up with their other players there. Yep, and actually, it's Explosive who's going to play here, replacing Kanamesan for Malaysia. Not going to see Creelin. Which is a bit of a surprise, because the matches are being quite close. I don't think you should leave Creelin outside of this one, because he is a pretty good man when it comes to this stuff. He's got good accuracy. I definitely would question um, him being removed. And wow, spicy meme with a very, very strange drop. Yeah, and the slow jump. Seems like he tapped the wrong, the wrong uh, key on there. That will be a huge difference now, a huge impact in the score of the team. Because this song, uh, this map is pretty much the same thing all the way through. The only hope that New Zealand has is that the density causes Malaysia to trip up because in terms of density, this is one of the densest maps in the pool. Probably the most one, actually. Yeah, but with that being said, it's still not all that difficult if you're able to handle it. Yeah, as you can see, Syrian and Worms are still holding 100% and when it comes to percentages, everyone is doing just fine. Even Spicy Mean with a drop is doing a really good job. Yeah, but another drop. To, Oof. Yeah, another drop there. I mean, the song's all but over already. This is going to be a third point for Malaysia here. Seems yes, like the indeed. tournament nerves might have gotten to him. He did do a bit, little spicy meme. Did do a little bit of a keyboard smash when he missed them. Who look at Worms sub 100, 300 count there. Two uh, two hundreds, but uh, 996k. And then Sayron with the double S there at 997.8k. Very solid runs. Yes, indeed. Really good rage of our worms over there. Double digit perfect. Spicy Meme saying that he uh, actually got a game or a client freeze mid song. That is certainly not going to help. 
So now it's 3-0 in favor of Malaysia. Now they are at match point. It was pretty fast, I will say. <laughs> like. Yeah, and the deceiving thing is we see Malaysia up 3-0, but it's not like this match has at any point been a blowout. It's actually been rather close throughout the entire match. I mean, that was actually the largest goal gap, and that was still in like 58,000 points. Yeah, we're not seeing huge gaps here. It's not like these are her just, you know, very, very simple wins. They're, they're actually quite close. Also, fun fact, Macau and Australia are now playing inside. They actually just finished, uh, and Australia taking the lead there. Oh, yeah, we're playing outside. <laughs> yeah, 262,000 points, and actually a really solid job there in terms of combo. Uh, four players looking like they got the full combo there, which on score v2 is actually pretty impressive. And two players from the Macau team actually beating out the entire Australian team, but the third player just not seem to be able to keep up with the others. Yeah, rather unfortunate reality there. And next pick on that match will be uh, Ours, son of Kick. Oh, sweet. First Freema selected so far. Yeah, haven't seen any sort of free mod pick in this match here, and I'm wondering if we're even going to. I don't think Malaysia should risk that. Like, they seem to have the advantage in the normal bracket, so there's no need to risk. Yeah, they don't need the extra points when they're winning. Okay. I wonder if they're going to try getting back in. Or if they'll just continue on without Carlin. Because they should hopefully be picking something shortly. And no, it does seem like they're going to try to get Carlin in. <laughs> Cryolian rage. So let's see what they decide to go for. Space time! There we go! There's the first free mod pick of this match. This so is the moment where a spicy meme decides to join, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is now where we look at the teams and say, okay, this is an actual free mod pick. Who's going to try to push out more points than they normally would want to go for? You know, let's, who wants to actually go for the risk of going for more than a million here? Well, Worms is definitely playing Hard Rock. No question. With that accuracy, absolutely. I will say that Uchi Hacks will also go with the Hard Rock. Uh, we'll have to question about the others. I will say Creolin should go with Hard Rock as well. I wonder if Creolian would... Well, see, now that's not worth the risk. Uh, in another situation, if Creolian needed to boost up more points, I'm personally wondering if he's the person who would do Flashlight and Hard Rock at the same time. But we're likely not going to see that here because, again, too much risk involved when it's really not needed. I feel like picking a free mod map in general is just not worth the risk at this point. It only is if you feel like you're slightly more trained than the other team in, in those elements. In this case though, it comes with a little bit of a risk here. Picking a free mod pick is going to allow Worms to get a really substantial score boost on Hard Rock. We've already seen that he's got very, very good accuracy. Yeah, I mean, when he was playing Hard Rock early, he actually did get over the million points, so... Oh, and look at oh. this. New Zealand bringing an entire Hard Rock roster here. So does Malaysia. Oh, everybody's doing Hard Rock. Hard I did not see the last screen there. This, okay, this is going to be better than we thought. Oh, boy. 
There Reduce we go. Reduce timing windows. Here we go. Is it going to be the like incredible match point or the incredible comeback? I will say yeah. that this map is probably the easier one on the free mod bracket. Uh, I disagree. Well, yeah, I I disagree only slightly because of one part. <laughs> Cannon. No, actually, Cannon hasn't been too bad here. I was I remember having issues with this this chart, but I guess that comes down to the fact that I'm very much an audible player. Like I'm not so much visual, and there's a part of the song that has no percussion, so I'm like, oh my god, kill me. <laughs> <laughs> But anyways, leaving that aside, now focusing on the map, seems like Creeling is holding the lead here when it comes to accuracy, but everyone in the Malaysian side is holding above 99%. Uh, New Zealand is a little bit behind on that aspect, but they still have the combo, so it can turn around. Yeah, we've got those upcoming, um, those mini jacks, the paradiddle mini jacks, and a couple of bursts in coming here, so we could see some Ooh. breaks here. This is a section, and as you can say, my goodness, the first miss already. I mean, the score is still kind of close, so there's. It's like it could still come through here. It can still happen, but they need two misses now in favor of them. And Malaysia has like one more hard part that they have to survive, and it's this one. They managed to hit it. Yeah, that. that... That space-time vocal sample is so hard to hit on hard rock. <laughs> yes, it is. Even the burst section before it is also pretty harsh. I think, I think even it's the if... last bit of the song here, and they just got a hundred thousand plus point lead here. I was just gonna say that I think even if Malaysia gets a miss at this point, they're still gonna be carried by the accuracy because that difference is just too strong. Um. Uh, look at that there. All the player, no, five out of the six players breaking the one million point boundary there. Worms with 1.06 million. Nice score over there. Indeed, really good score actually by Worms. I think it's a really, actually a really good performance. This map with Hard Rock is.